Hi DIYers, this is Michael from AlarmGrid, and today I'm going to be showing you how to power on the Telguard TG1 Express using the onboard terminals. We have our uh, Telguard uh, TG1 Express here. Um, you see the antenna is not connected at this time, we'll be working on that later in the video. But the main reason why you would be um, using the onboard terminals for power instead of just the standard RJ31X connection, which you're going to use anyway for tip and ring, is just because um, the power uh, or the, the power connections for the RJ31X cable might have been cut, um, which we're simulating in our case using this rubber band. Uh, we have our cut cables uh, pulled back. So we only have four remaining cables. Uh, there's the, the brown wire, the gray wire, the green wire, and the red wire. Now in our case, we're only worried about the red wire and the green wire for tip and ring. Um, you only need to keep the green and the red. Um, the brown and the gray, they're not as important, um, but we're going to just keep ours there anyway. That's actually how it would send the phone signal back to the phone line. Um, but as long as you don't have a phone line, they're, they're not very important, but we can leave them there. They're not causing any problems. Um, but we're going to be working with that today. Um, we're we're going to leave these connections alone, but we will be taking it out from our RJ31X jack um, and simulating how you would do this. So uh, the first thing we want to do is power down the panel, which um, our backup battery is already disconnected. So we're just going to use our Honeywell LT cable to power it down. We're going to disconnect the connection. And you see our keypad went blank, and um, we're ready to go. So always make sure you power down your system before making any hardware changes. Um, now the next thing we want to do is open the Telguard uh, TG1 Express. So we have ours here. And um, we have uh, our flathead screwdriver. And we can just stick it into these holes right through there. Get the first one, and then the second one. Second one wasn't quite there. There we go. There we go. So we opened it up just like that. And so now we can uh, complete our connections. So um, we have our terminal block here. And if, if you see, it covers up uh, the labels there. But if you refer to the um, quick install guide, it does show um, the, the labeling of everything. So um, we're actually going to be using these right two terminals. Um, one's for the negative power connection, the ground connection. And then the one closest to the, the phone jack is um, for the positive power. All right, so, um, but before we do these power connections, um, just one thing real quick. We will take our cable uh, from our RJ31X uh, jack, and we're just going to take it and take it out. We won't need the RJ31X jack, so we can just set that aside for the rest of the video. Um, we're not going to use it. And uh, so we're going to make our connection here. And we want to run our wire through the back plate, um, so that way it, we can clo clo close the module later. Um, and we're just going to stick it in there. It is kind of a tight connection, so we're just going to Bend it. It's, it's normal to be doing this. Um, you just got to get it in there. And it doesn't want to be going in there, but it, this is definitely where it goes. So there we go. All right, we'll just pull some wire back there, and it's nice and secured in there. So we got ours uh, in there. So this uh, has the phone line. Um, it's still getting the tip and ring connections. Um, the, the gray and the brown connections, they don't matter because we don't have a phone line anymore. We've upgraded to cellular. Um, so we have ours going in, in the right place here. So now that that's taken care of, uh, we'll do our power connections. So it's going to receive auxiliary power from the panel. So we're going to do it at terminals 4 and 5 on the Vista. If you're using a different panel, refer to the installation manual to see where the, uh, the auxiliary power connections go. But we'll start at the, the Telguard. Um, so we have our red wire and our black wire. This is a four conductor wire. We've uh, pulled back the, the yellow and the green wire. They're not needed in this case. So uh, the black wire goes to the terminal uh, that's um, second from the right. And we just insert it into there. And then we're going to tighten it down uh, using our screwdriver, which we have over here. And so we just take it, and we're just going to tighten that down like so. Remember to run your wires through the back plate so that way you can close the unit, which we're doing here. All right, that's good. And now we're going to take our red wire and we're going to connect it to the 12 volt uh, positive power connection. Right in there, if I can just get it in there. And there, it's in there. So now we're going to tighten it down. Remember to refer to your quick install guide if you're not sure uh, where the terminals are, or you can use a pair of pliers. And you can uh, pull that terminal block off, and there'll actually be a label underneath. So if that works easier for you, then do that. But we remember where ours go. All right. So we got those secure. A nice tug to make sure. All right. And now we're going to connect at the panel. 
So since this is a Vista panel, uh, it's using terminals four and five. We can actually match that up with the keypad, which is also receiving auxiliary power, so we can match the colors there. So the black one's gonna go to terminal four. And we're just gonna, we'll loosen this up right here. Got our black wire going in. And we'll tighten that down. Right. And then we have our red wire going to terminal five, um, which is for positive power. Again, where you can just match up with the where the keypad goes because that's also receiving auxiliary power. And your panel, if you're not using a Vista um, or you're using a um, a different type of Vista, then uh, you, they might be in different places. This is a Vista um, 21 IP, just for reference. Same as the 20P with the added internal IP communicator. But anyway, so we got our connections all made. Uh, so the next thing to do is to connect the antenna. Uh, so we have our antenna here, and this helps get it the best signal possible. So you can just take it on there, and you can just uh, twist it into place. Um, you want to twist the metal part there. And here we go. Once it stops twisting, then you know it's nice and secure. So uh, now that we've done that, uh, we can power on the panel. We've made our connections. Um, everything's installed. So we're just going to power our system back on. And in our case, we're just going to plug the LT cable back in. And you can see uh, the light appears on the teleguard, indicating that it is receiving auxiliary power from the panel. So that's great. Um, the next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to check um, the cell signals, uh, the RSSI signals. You want to do this before permanently mounting, um, just so you make sure that um, you're getting the best cell signal possible. Uh, so now that we have our uh, unit powered on, um, it's receiving auxiliary power from the panel, we can uh, press and hold this um, RSSI button to check cell signals. And uh, it looks like the green signal is solid, and we have some other ones there. Um, refer to the installation manual to determine the meaning of these, um, to determine if you're getting strong enough cell signals. Um, for a tip for getting the best cell signal, uh, position the antenna as high as possible. Make sure it's away from any um, obstacles, such as large metal ob objects or thick walling. Um, you might consider getting um, a cellular amplifier if you're really having a struggle, struggle getting a strong signal. So make sure to check that. Um, you will want to mount the unit. Um, when you do mount the unit, um, you're going to power your system down. We recommend that. And you can see on the back here, uh, there are uh, two um, screw holes uh, for, for mounting. These are two and a half inches apart, so um, keep that in mind. Um, and do remember that this will draw uh, 115 milliamps from the panel um, current. So make sure to consider that into your power, power calculation. We're fine for that. We don't have a lot of devices on our Vista. So um, once you've uh, got this in the right place and everything, you will want to apply the cover. Uh, this is why we uh, put our wires through the back plate. So that way uh, we could do this properly. So we want to get the top first and then the bottom. And then it clicks into place, just like that. So um, once you've done everything, you have it mounted, you have it all set up and everything, you will need to activate this for monitoring service. Um, you will need a cellular monitoring plan um, because this is a cellular communicator. It's taking over the panel's phone dialer. The panel still thinks it's dialing out, but really that signal is going over a cellular connection. So you will need to get a cellular plan, such as an alarm grid gold plan. Um, and having this unit will allow you to use the Telguard Home Control Flex app, which you can uh, use to control your panel remotely using Telguard service. Um, it's similar to Total Connect and uh, Alarm.com, but it's, it's, it's Telguard's own thing. So you can use that to control your system remotely. So that's how you power on a Telguard TG1 Express using the onboard terminals. Again, you do this um, if the other wires have been cut, because otherwise you can just receive everything from that phone jack connection, that RJ31X connection, um, instead of having to use those onboard terminals. But if their wire, those wires are cut, you have this other option here. So it can be a good you know, other option if you just don't have the other one available. So that's how you power on the Telguard TG1 Express. If you have any questions about the Telguard TG1 Express or about Alarm Monitoring Service, uh, send an email to support at alarmgrid.com. Um, and if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up below to like the video. And remember to subscribe to our channel for updates on future videos. We hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.